Oh. You know, I never thought the day would come when I would have to read an article about divorce. Uh. Marriages come and go, but divorce is forever. Ain't that the fucking truth? Anyway, um... <clears throat> this article has been brought to me by Ryu and I thought it interesting for me to talk about this and I pretty much will talk about this in the next article following that in a different video. Well... Let's dive into this thing, shall we? Cheating survey finds that people cheat with people less attractive than their spouses. I'm just going to go into it. Save till after. The age-old assumption that people cheat with someone better looking than their current partner may not actually be true. According to a new survey by Victoria Milan, a dating site for married people looking to have an affair. The website polled over 4,000 of their members. Pardon. It's 7 a.m. over here. Been up all night. As I was saying before, um... The website polled over 4,000 of their members and found that the most people using the site consider their significant others to be more attractive than their affair partners. Interestingly, male respondents said they consider their, their significant others superior to their affair partners in other ways as well. Only 30% of men cheated with women younger than their current partners. And only a quarter of, their, of the men found their mistresses more interesting or more in shape than their partners. So why cheat at all? Men admitted that they found their mistresses to be more passionate, better listeners, and more caring than their significant others. Over half of the female respondents also found their significant others to be more attractive than their affair partners, but 50% said their lovers were in better shape. Similar to the male respondents, women reported that their affairs, their affair partners listened better and more passionate than the men at home. In a whopping 89.6% of the women indicated that the man they're cheating with makes them feel more appreciated than their significant other. This isn't the first time a dating site for cheaters has looked into the habits and preferences for its users. Ashley Madison, another website, another dating website, for people already in relationships, found that cheating men love drinking Guinness. What? And in August, the same site revealed what Aunt Affair anthems cheating spouses prefer. Check out the slideshow to see which songs crack the top ten. Okay, so number ten. We have Skank Bitch, I mean Ludicrous, with area codes. Uh huh. Next. Number nine. Usher. Confessions. Mm -hmm. Number eight, Carrie Underwood before he cheats. Way to put that out there, Miss Underwood. Way to put that out there. Number seven, Unfaithful. I'm pretty sure it's all depressing as all hell. TLC reaches number six for Creep. I've heard this song how many times? My God. Number five, Justin Timberlake, Cry Me a River. If I, if I had a dime for every time I heard that statement. Uh, number four, Hank Williams, You're a Cheating Heart. Yeah, that, that, one, that one just says a lot. Doesn't, that just speaks out right there. Number three, Shaggy, It Wasn't Me. 
Bold statement ever known. Right after you do the deed, it wasn't me. Mm -hmm. Number two, Rupert Holmes, Escape, or the Pina Colada song. And number one, R. Kelly, Download, featuring Ronald uh, Isley. No one, no one has to know. Nobody has to know. <sighs> yeah, I'm just going to go away from that. I'm just going to pretty much share my... I'm going to share something personal that I really haven't... That most people don't know. When I was in Japan, a lot happened, you know. A lot happened... I was a certain, <sighs> as I was saying before, I was in, J when I was in Japan, I was uncertain about a lot of things. I was uncertain about my then relationship with my then wife, and, let me get away from that picture, picture which people else fuck. Anyway, um, the thing was, she had been working, she had been working as a teacher, and there were certain, how should I, how should I say this, she, she stayed after hours on certain nights, like around Tuesday, Thursday, something like that. I had a, I had an inkling that she was cheating on me. I didn't want to think about it, but I really, I really was thinking that. I was just thinking, you know, maybe she, she has someone on her side. So I called home, and I spoke to my mom about this subject. She had to break it down to me. She might be cheating on me. So... When this happened, it was kind of weird what she said. I mean, I mean how it how it came out. She says, "Well, I want to, you know, why don't we go out on a date?" And I and I looked at her and said, "Okay, so can't come along." She said, "No." I said, "All right then." I agreed to go out on a date with her. And she had told me what had been going on, the changes that had been happening while I was, and mind you, what had gone on was we separated for a while, actually I, I separated from her, went back home, got myself a checkup, just to make sure I was okay, had to basically do my business and... I basically left her a note saying I'm I'm going to come back as soon as I get my checkup and everything. She didn't listen, so she just basically freaked the fuck out. And here's the funny thing. As I'm looking at my batteries. The funny thing is that Her mother called my house. I basically had to lay low the entire time while I was here because I, you know, I really was trying to make sure I was okay so I'd go back. Because you know when you're in a when you're in a different country, you know, and they don't know. The human body, as well as you know where you originally come from, that becomes that 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 becomes somewhat important, and you have to know: Are you okay? You know. Well, here's the thing. After coming back, and this is fast forwarding to the date. 
she buys me a drink. A smoothie, if you will. And I'm listening to her. And she was crying and she was... She was... I don't know if she was really, you know, sincere about it, but she was crying. More than likely she wasn't. And... She said she basically said she had been cheating on me. I looked at her. There was nothing I could possibly say at that point because I had the hunch of, you know, not wanting to basically believe it. Because, you know, I I had done nothing wrong. I basically took care of the kid, her kid. While she was still work, waiting and working. And <sighs> one moment. You know, I really do hate that one. Around 7.30 something happens. Like the, like I hear the door open. I don't know if the doorbell ring throws my whole, throws my whole thoughts completely off. As I was saying before, what had happened was, after she told me she had been cheating on me, I was steamed. I was so steamed that I could not take it. It it was it just got to me to the point in which it just made me explode all over her. And not in the way she liked it. The following day afterwards I was so angry and frustrated. I couldn't deal with it anymore. I wanted a divorce. Because it, I mean, after a whole year, it wasn't going to work out. After everything that was going on, it just wasn't going to work out. So, what had happened? So we went down to um, City Hall, signed the papers, and after that, it, that was it. I mean, that was it. I, 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 that was it. I packed my things, and after like a freaking argument, I went homeless. Couldn't deal with her anymore. So, I mean, the good thing is I had a bit of money to last me for at least two weeks before actually getting out of the country. I had slept in the, in the train station. I curled up on five five seats if I couldn't if I couldn't sit in a seat while sleeping I curled up I used my um, my coat as my um, cover and just slept there and for the last couple days I endured the I endured being homeless I mean, really being homeless. I wasn't asking for money. I wasn't, you know, trying to hustle to get money. It was just... It was just... Ugh. 
Words cannot explain how bad it was on my part. Because I had to stay there the entire time until someone actually picked me up, took me to their place, and after ha and after being so exhausted, so totally wiped out from dealing with this, I was grateful. I was really grateful to to have some type of food in my system because all I've been having were snack foods. Kid you not, I, all, that's all I had, just snack foods. I had to sacrifice a bit of um, my my stuff that I had in order to get back home, but it was a worthy sacrifice. I look at now I look at now and mind you this is not the first time I've been cheated on I've been cheated on by a, I've been cheated on by a girl that stayed with me for a while And when she went back to Pen to yeah, when she went back to Pennsylvania, she cheated on me. And I lost a good chain that day. But in any case, coming back to this article, my apologies if if it stirs something old up. I wonder why people do such sort of things. Well, from what I can tell, and, and this is out of personal preference, the reason why people cheat in marriages is because as certain people grow older, I mean, as people grow older, not certain people, but as people gr grow older, so does their taste. Their taste of, um, ac uh, their taste of actual, should I say, other oh, colonel's desires to change. They want something different. They want something, you know. They want something that totally says, you know, I, I I want to be more excited. Some people do kind of get all snooty and and their partners that they, they they say I do to, well, some of them just don't know what they're getting into. I mean, you would think, all couples would go into these relationships for love. For the record, I feel that's what most couples should do. They should have time to know each other first before they start taking that next step, which is tying the knot. They should really find out what it is they like about each other, they dislike about each other, things they need to remember, that sort of thing. I feel that is what is needed here. And like I said, there, there's a lot going on that most people don't know about. And the way you know about this is, well, you have to talk about it. I mean, I feel that most of the problem that lies within this, um, within society, especially within relationships, 
is that the people who do go into relationship, they quit talking. For no apparent reason, they just quit talking. Sadly, it, it, it is something, but, you know, that's what it is. They quit talking. They lose track of um, each other. And be that as it may, that's what it is. The, the, the communication, that's why when men go out, they go out with the guys. When women go out, they go with the girls. And sadly, you know, that's what it is. It's just a sad thing. They just don't talk to each other. They have to have, I mean, they have to have their bonding time. But it is what it is. So actually, at least I can say, out of the various relationships I've been in prior to now, I've only had. Two real life relationships. One didn't work out for me because most most likely the girl was young and she was more likely in high school, young and petulant, blah 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 blah. Got how old I was back then. And a few years later I married trying to make things work out but it doesn't work out not even the sex would help especially when she kept telling me not to come it's like I said, that kind of hurts because <sighs> I don't know she she just didn't want an, uh, she didn't want the responsibility uh, that's what I feel she didn't want the responsibility of being a wife so, I mean, I had the responsibility of being a husband. That's not a problem. I mean, I understand if you have a bad day, I give you space. I said, look, I'm going to go out. I'll be back. Where am I going? I'll tell you. I'm going to the arcade. I'm going to get myself a drink. I'm not going to get myself something like booze or anything like that, no. I'm just going to go out. I mean, if there's an arcade or something close by, I said, well, I'm just going to stay there. Have her time to herself. Come back when she's calm. And that was it. I mean, that's how I, de that's how I dealt with... That's how I really dealt with the relationship I was in. But, that's a story for another time. So, I leave this question to the viewing audience. You be the judge. What do you think about this survey? Really, I'd like to hear what you think about this. I mean, if you have any personal thoughts about it or anything like that I'd like to hear this kind of feedback and with that I'll see you when I see you for another um, for more videos and of course I will of course have the article for you to look at on your own volition.